So, we're getting uh, jiggy with it. I got this piece of tracks. I got a couple pieces from a deck I dismantled earlier this summer. This stuff's like, look at this, heavy duty composite. Heavy plasticizer. This is pretty heavy board, but I'm gonna rip it. Basically, I'm gonna pull these nails out and then rip it down to three quarter inch strips. And then also, this is the wood. This is a piece of dunnage from either chair four or chair six construction, like when they ship up all this. All these spiders up here. Oh my God, look at all those things. Uh, when they ship all this stuff up for the chairlift, it all came on dunnage. I mean, this was literally 10 years ago and I, they would throw it all in the dumpster and this whole shed actually was built out of two by fours and two, four by fours that was like literal free wood that was going in the trash. Like it was all the dunnage material for all the heavy stuff. This four by four was a piece of it. I remember it cause it was this nice uh, rough sawn material, but this guy's dense. Like, I don't know if you can see those. We got a pretty dense uh, tree ring count and this guy's hefty. So it might not look like it, but I'm gonna turn them into a sweet pair of skis. Uh, cut this down to uh, manageable <coughs> length. <coughs> skis I'm making at this point. I'm just kind of whipping together. So I like this like this uh it's got meters, centimeters. Can't work in inches. That would be so uh patriarchal or something. Uh let's cut out 200 and then I'll trim it from there. I like this grain. I don't know why I'm getting a kick out of this grain so much. Nice piece of wood, you know. She's she's getting the upgrade. Another another life to live. So I got these ripped reusable strips. You know, I was just thinking about in general. Like I think I'm gonna do two sets of cores. I'm gonna do identical, but then have these as a sidewall and maples as a sidewall. The crux being like this has no strength to itself. Like it's a nice, it's a nice as the sidewall goes, but there's no, you're not gonna get any springiness or stiffness really. Cause we're the same size of maple anyway. That's what I'm thinking is I'm gonna do two exact pairs. One with maple, one with this. See how they are different. Uh, man, I got a pile of freaking dust to clean up. and I think I'm officially tired, it's nine o'clock. Catch you on the flip side. All right, back, gotta rip this bastard down to some strips. See how well this works. Isn't too bad. Uh, okay, rip it the other way now. This board's nice. It's freaking straight. Like it's not doing any weird, any weirdness. All right, I ripped that whole board down and all these strips. And then when I organize them into the skis, like the, I'll alternate the way these, the, uh, the grains are running. So it kind of homogenizes. You don't want them all going one way because then the ski might do weird shit when it gets real cold or real warm or whatever. You know, you, ideally you're trying to make it all homogenous. Question is what skis am I actually making here? Because uh, that dictates how wide your cores go. I have 16 of these rips, sidewall, sidewall, and then I'm gonna get some maple and do the maple power plate. It's called a Stomp Super Teched Out Mountain Power Performance Plate or stomp P to the third, stomp P cubed. <laughs> or super teched out mountain power performance, that's what it was. 
Uh, yeah. So I gotta figure out which skis I'm doing. I'm thinking something smaller, like a mid mountain, mid size, something rippable. Let's see what we got here. Stuff. Which one is this? Ninety one seventy. Oh, I think these were the copy of the Storm Riders, actually. So here are my really all around. The skis are just fun in all conditions, basically. And I made one copy of them, so two years ago, and here's how you do it. You just copy the ski you like, cut out your board. Um, so I did do one copy of this last year. See if I can find the video, put the link in the description. Uh, but they fucking f fell apart because I used, normally I use like three or four layers of six ounce fiberglass. And this one I got some, a good deal on some 20 ounce glass, which so really heavy glass. And it needed way more I just didn't wet it out basically I'd never used that thick of glass and it seemed to wet it out and it wasn't <coughs> making excuses um, and then the edges popped out in the middle of Christmas shoot as I recall but the skis skied great until then so I think this is what we're doing which means that we want This. So that's too wide. Take one left like that. And we'll go here. There. So this is the deal. I got my sidewall material, my core material. I have to make sure that it stays overlapped. You know, my, my width up here. You know, so I got perfect clearance out here. I have to make sure on the inside of my side cut it still has some barely any sidewall material. Like barely. So what I can do, I've got very little room to play. Because I have this much, I got like a quarter inch on each side, so I've got half inch total. Here, I mean, I'm like six, I got like an eight fucking sidewall, which is not enough. So one way I could do it would be rip one of these down. I don't think about this. And also, you got your grain direction, but I can pick pieces with no knots or less knots. Like this is a pretty good one. These are pretty good. Oh, there's one little knot. This one's pretty good. All right, I put these bad boys together. So this worked perfect. I took a quarter or an eighth inch off two of the strips. So now I've got sidewall coverage to the tail in the middle. Cool. Well, I'm gonna get these things put together uh, and catch you on the flip side.